when you get back from a shoot, I would recommend if you want to develop them later, that's fine, but at least cull them right after your shoot. This video is going to save you tons of time because in it, I'm going to give you five tips and a step-by-step -step workflow on how to quickly cull large batches of images in Lightroom. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, my friends? My name is Pai. Welcome back to Adorama TV. I'm glad to be back. I've got a little bit of a case of cabin fever, and I feel like you all might be in the same boat. So what better to do when we're stuck inside than some post-production? And here we have a post-production tutorial, namely on how do we cull faster. So we're going to be using Lightroom for this tutorial, but you can apply this workflow and kind of the tips to any application, whether it be Capture One or Photo Mechanic. Let's go ahead and dive in and let me show you kind of what we're working with. So a couple days ago, I did a photo shoot for a local BJJ uh, Jiu Jitsu gym that I actually practice BJJ at. So if you guys roll, come join me. I'd love to see you guys. It's at One Jiu Jitsu in Tustin. Now, what we have here is <laughs> about 2000 images of just this action sequence of different people rolling. And if you guys are shooting portraits, if you're doing events, if you're doing sports, if you're doing weddings, it's likely that you're loading lots of images like this into your catalog. So how do we quickly get through them? Well, let's start with tip number one. I want you guys inside of Lightroom to make sure you're always working from the library module. Let me explain why. The library module is going to load a different type of preview than the develop module. So if I flip this over to the develop module, you'll immediately start noticing the rendering preview that it's creating is a developing preview. And this preview takes longer to load as you move from images to image, images, whatever. So if you press E to flip back to loop view, you start noticing that we can cycle through these images much, much quicker. Tip two before culling and most certainly before processing your images, render out your previews. Now, what you really need is smart previews, but I'd kind of recommend just creating all your previews at once. If you render one-to-one, -one, it's gonna create everything you need. Let me show you how to do that. So if I go ahead and jump to grid view by pressing G, I can select all the images by pressing Control A or Command A. Then I'm simply gonna go up to the library menu, go down to previews, and then choose build one-to-one, -one, or if you wanna build specific previews, you can. But again, one-to-one -one is going to create essentially everything that you need. Another way of getting there is from the import dialog. So press Control shift i or Command shift i if you're on a Mac to jump into the import dialog. Now you can render previews directly from the import dialog by going up to the file handling dropdown, going to build previews, and choosing what you would like to render. As a minimum, I like to select smart previews when I'm importing because it's very quick to generate smart previews and you can use those to actually cull and edit on, which I'm going to show you a bonus tip in just a moment as well. But at least do that. Here's what I would say. If you guys want to import quickly, just leave build previews on minimal and then turn on build smart previews and then you can import quickly and do any culling and processing that you need to right away um, as you need. If you guys want to import and have everything done for you, then choose one-to-one -one during this process. Just keep in mind that once it finishes importing, it's gonna slow down your machine as it's rendering out one-to-one -one previews and everything that Lightroom needs. Now, depending on the speed of your machine and depending on the number of images, if you're pulling in thousands of images, this could take a couple hours. Not a big deal if you're gonna step away from your computer, but if you need to work on your machine, then it's gonna slow things down to the point where it's really not gonna be fun. So if you need your machine right away, stick to minimal and go build smart previews. If you're doing this process overnight, I would do it all at once. Okay, now the bonus tip, if I escape out of this and press Control D or Command D just to deselect all my images, I'm now gonna press Control comma or Command comma to bring up my preferences dialog. Now here's the other nicety. If you jump into the performance tab, Right here under the develop little panel, you can see use smart previews instead of originals for image editing. Now what this allows you to do is by choosing that option upon import to render out your smart previews and then selecting this, as soon as the images get imported, it's quickly gonna create those smart previews and you can begin to develop using those smart previews instead of the originals. 
The only thing to remember is that some of the images might not be as crisp and sharp because it's using a smaller size smart preview, a lower quality preview. But not to worry, the files are still fine. If you click on them, it'll actually zoom in and load the full preview while you're developing. So just a little side bonus tip there if you need to jump into processing images quickly. Number three, I want you guys to simplify your culling process to either keep or reject, okay? This is why. So as I'm looking at these images, there's a number of ways that you can rate these images, right? I can use one through five to set up different star ratings or press zero. I can use six, seven, eight, nine to choose different colors. But here's the deal. If I have to think about what I want each of these things to be while I'm calling, for example, some people might go, you know what? A one star is an image that I don't want to keep. A two star is something I want to keep. Three star I'm gonna deliver and it might be portfolio. Four star is like definitely social media. Five stars is portfolio. Well, if I have this system set up, every image that I go through, I have to sit there and think, man, is this a one or a two or a three or four or five? It's a lot of brain power to try to figure out what each of these images are. Instead, I would recommend that you choose a simple workflow. You either keep the image or you reject the image. Do I want this image? If so, flag it with a P. Do I not want this image? If so, mark it with an X. I'm actually gonna show you an even better process in just a moment. Now at the end of your culling process, you can choose what you wanna do with your rejected images and so forth, but keep the actual process of picking or rejecting as simple as possible. Reduce the number of keystrokes, reduce the brain power necessary. That way you can fly through these images choosing only the images that you want to keep or the images you want to reject. And that brings us to the next step. So step number four is to use either a calling in or a calling out workflow. I'm going to explain what this means. So a calling in workflow means essentially that we're choosing all of our images by going back to grid view, selecting control A or pressing control A, command A on a Mac, and then choosing X. And what we're gonna do from here is this is gonna mark every image as a reject, right? Okay, so this marks every image as a reject. Now I'm gonna press Control D or Command D to deselect. I'm gonna go into loop view, and then I'm gonna move through here, and as I find an image that I wanna keep, I'm simply gonna mark it P. I've now reduced my keystrokes to simply one button. Which do I wanna keep? P. That is a calling in workflow where we mark everything as a reject and then we call in as we feel necessary. Now here's a calling out workflow and I'm gonna tell you when to use each. A calling out workflow would be to select everything by pressing Control A or Command A again and pressing P. Then we do the opposite. So now everything's gonna be marked to be delivered and as we go through we'd say, oh, you know what, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. And once again, we have one keystroke to remove something from the delivery. So what I would say is this shoot, I'm going to be delivering the majority of these images because they're action sequences and I want the gym to be able to have those action sequences right in their, in their delivery. So I feel like a calling out workflow is going to be better when you want to keep the majority of images because if I want to keep the majority of images, it's less keystrokes to remove things from the majority, right? If, I, if I'm gonna deliver the majority, it's less keystrokes to remove the rejects. But if I'm going to be delivering, let's say 10 out of 100 images, if I'm gonna deliver the minority of images, then you're gonna flip flop it and use a calling in workflow where you select everything, mark them as rejects, and you're just gonna select the small number of images that you actually wanna keep and deliver. So that's the difference between the two, and this is how simple we keep our process. Now, if later you want to mark these images for portfolio, for social media, for anything like that, do that after you've processed them. Cull them, process them, and then at that place you know exactly what you have. Mark whatever images as a three star or a five star, or whatever you want to do to signify where they, you want them to go kind of in your uh, ultimate portfolio catalog or whatever it is that you want to do, but save that for the last step. So since we're here and since I'm gonna be delivering most of these, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them and just mark them as P. And as I go through, I'll mark them as rejects as necessary. Now this brings us to the last step and I wanna show you all how I like to cull, which is from the loop view and I'm gonna show you why. So I'll press E to drop into the loop view. And what I like to do from the loop view is I'll take this film strip that's usually quite small and I'll expand it as large as it will go in my view. So the image is kind of maximized. My film strip is as large as possible. 
And what I like to do is use the film strip to kind of see what's coming. Okay, so I'm really culling mostly off the film strip and then I'm looking up to verify sharpness on the loop view. So the film strip kind of tells me if if a particular action sequence and, and I can see even expressions or at least some of the expressions from that. And then what I can do is look up and say, OK, are all the eyes open? Do I have critical sharpness? Is everything good? And then keep moving and flag either in or out as I go. If you use the grid view, if I press G to cull from the grid view, this is the problem. I'm going to go ahead and press plus to increase the size of these thumbnails, right? And I can even press tab or shift tab to close down all of the other panels. So I give myself as much real estate as possible. Now, this view is great for being able to see kind of what's going on overall in the shoot. But as soon as I get to an image, I'm like, oh, this is a winner right here. If I want to see sharpness, I still have to double click on it and go back to loop view to verify my sharpness. So instead, I'm essentially staying in loop view and I'm making my panel down here as large as possible, looking off the panel to see what's coming and looking up to verify expressions and sharpness. And this is kind of the fastest way where I can get through thousands of images in a very short period of time. Now here's one little extra bonus tip for you guys. I want you all to cull as soon as you get back from any shoot. The difference in culling a thousand images right after the shoot is a matter of like 15 to 30 minutes to cull using these steps and workflow versus doing it a couple days later when it's not as fresh, doing it a week later, you're talking two to three hours. You're talking exponentially more time because the shots and the images are not fresh on your mind. So when you get back from a shoot, I would recommend if you want to develop them later, that's fine, but at least cull them right after your shoot. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to the Ad Arma TV channel, and I'd love for you all to comment below in the video. Let us know what you thought about the video, what you guys learned, and what you all want to see next. I'm happy to create it. I have plenty of time. And in the meanwhile, you guys have plenty of time. So if you guys want to check out more of the best A to Z education, go to srloungeworkshops.com. We actually just released the latest Lightroom tutorial, which is an A to Z comprehensive tutorial on not only understanding the whole catalog and organization process of Lightroom, but mastering the develop module, creating any type of image you want from Lightroom. That's it for me. If you guys want to follow me, you can follow me at Pygersa or on SLR Lounge. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.